What's up guys, it's Zach. Today, I'm gonna to be bringing you an effects breakdown of how I used Photoshop's Generative Fill AI in my music videos. As you saw in the intro, we use it to add set extensions, create clean plates, clean up backgrounds, and make cool effects. So let's jump straight into Final Cut Pro. This will work in any software, but I'm using Final Cut Pro today, and let's get on with it. So let's start with our tire set extension. For this clip, we used Photoshop's generative AI to add more tires to the scene. We're a little bit limited on how many tires we could bring on set. So using AI, we made it feel a lot larger than what we actually had available on hand. With this clip, we did shoot in S-Log3, but I find that Photoshop's generative AI works a little bit better with a contrastier image. So to get us started, I've put a Rec 709 LUT on our clip. And where we go from here is we just need to export a still frame. We can do this in Final Cut. I like to use a PNG. If you're not getting these options, what you might need to do is just add a destination and then you'll see save current frame and you can bring that down here. So with our still frame exported, we can now open up Photoshop and drag our image straight into Photoshop beta. Now, before we just start selecting around our artist and typing in tires, we're probably not gonna get the best result. And this is for two reasons. The first reason we're not gonna get good results is Photoshop's generative fill is limited to 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. So if we're working with a 4K image, it's not nearly as much resolution as we need to fill the screen. If we actually zoom in here, we can see how much lower resolution and quality these generated sections are compared to what we actually shot. So this little tip I'm gonna give you, I learned from Pix and Perfect. He's made a whole automation process and it's a free plugin that you can go and download, um, but we're gonna do the manual way. So if we delete what we've generated and start again, if we go to our rectangle marquee tool, go to style, change this, make sure it's on fixed size. And if we type in 800 pixels by 800 pixels, we can now start selecting areas that are gonna be much high resolution in their final output. Tip number two as to why you're probably not getting good results is you don't have a reference image. I went online earlier and found this perfect example of the tires that what we have in our set versus what we kind of want the end result to be. If we use this reference image and start selecting where we want these tires to start and then build up from, we can get some really interesting results. So add tire stack. You just need to wait for it to render a little bit. And then as you can see, we're now getting some really convincing tire looks. We can rinse and repeat this process with our reference image, add tire stack. And now we're getting some really, really good convincing results that also match the lighting that we have in the scene. I'm gonna fast forward and do this a couple more times. And just to jump in quickly, it's really important that our selection doesn't include any of the artist because we're gonna need him later. So if you find that no matter where you select, because you can't go outside of the boundaries of the canvas, you're starting to get, for example, in this case, his shoes, what you can do is just change the height down to something a little bit more reasonable. There we go, that ducks right under his feet. We can go back to generating. All right, now that we've got all of the tires that we want, as you can see with our layers here, how do we get this back into Final Cut Pro or whatever your editing software is? We simply just need to disable the bottom layer and you'll see that all of this checkerboard pattern is now your alpha channel. So if we quickly just go up to file, export, quick export as JPEG and save to our desktop, you will now see that when we bring this file into Final Cut Pro, we have our tires with our moving video clip. Now this is already pretty convincing, but if we wanted to make this a compound clip and now add a bit of color and everything now matches perfectly. Another key factor as to why this works so well is because this is a locked off shot. The camera isn't moving. What we can now do is add some digital camera movement and now it actually feels like it's part of the scene a little bit more. Once we add our color grade, some handheld camera shakes and fine tune everything just a little bit, we get a really nice result. Now moving on to our flying car clip, how did we do it? Because if I were to duplicate this clip quickly, add a quick little draw mask around the car, boom, 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 and start moving it around, the car is still very much in the way 
we need a empty clean background to actually make this effect look good. Again, we exported this image just as a single frame and opened it up in Photoshop. Now with our image in Photoshop, what we can do is using the lasso tool, we can quickly just make a selection around our car, generative fill and remove. Now this is looking pretty good so far, but as you can see, if I zoom in, it doesn't quite look as high resolution as some of our other footage. There's just a sharpness to these leaves that I'm missing from these. You can really kind of see the pixelated edge. And that's because our initial selection was much higher than the 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. So what we can go ahead and do is merge these two layers and go back over with our rectangular marquee tool and anywhere that we believe is a little bit low in resolution we can now just type in generative fill you don't even necessarily need to fill in what the box says it'll just start generating based on the surrounding environment and now you can clearly see the edge here this is much higher resolution than our leaf friends over here so if we just continue, rinse and repeat, making this higher resolution each time we go around selecting a new area. Now this is looking a lot better. And remember, as long as it's roughly around the 800 by 800 pixels, you're gonna get much higher resolution results. If you're happy with what you're looking at, again, you can simply export this and bring it back into Final Cut. Now, as you can see, we've got our clean plate and our car shot. How do we get the two to fly? Well, the simple answer is we can use Final Cut's built-in draw mask and painstakingly go all the way around the fine edges of the car. And if I change the view from original to composite, you can see our selection and what will end up being the final result. I ended up doing a few more rotoscopes of just the tires. And once you add some keyframes for movement, and some drop shadow just to add a little bit of realism it really all sandwiches the the final clip together so that's how we use photoshop's generative ai to make a clean plate let's move on into how we can make some effects out of it as well now this is our raw clip of a clock tower that i filmed while we were out on tour i really liked the circular nature of the clock face and wanted to change and transition that into a number of things. How we can go about that in Final Cut is again going up to your export and instead of doing save as current frame, we need to export this as an image sequence. So we get every single frame as its own individual picture. If you're not seeing this, we can go to add destination, go to image sequence and just drag that in. So let's export our image sequence again as PNG. I'm just going to give it a folder name, Moses and Tactics. Now all of our individual frames will import into that folder. As you can see here, if I open them and I scroll one by one, they are all ever so slightly different from each other. And there's something like 50 frames here because it's a two second clip. So if I select all of them and just drag them into Photoshop beta, they will all open as their own individual projects. So now that we have our individual frames all in Photoshop, it's going to be a little bit different than usual because we're working with a circular face here. So our rectangle marquee tool is not going to work. We want to change this over to an elliptical marquee tool. And we want to just roughly get the same size as the clock face. So now if we open generative fill, we can just start typing in whatever we want to see. Now, yes, you can use reference images, but it's not necessary. I find reference images are better for when you're trying to add something that's not in the frame at all. Whereas for this, we're just trying to replace the face of something that's very much in the frame. So if I type in coin and we wait for this to generate, we'll now see what we end up with. Now we have an option. We can now cycle through. I like this one. Again, export as PNG. And now we just rinse and repeat and do that for each frame, given that it's going to be a slightly different angle. Once you do that, you'll end up with a folder that should look something like this. When I play them all back one frame at a time in the quick view, you can see that every individual frame is unique. And that's what we want here. 
because when we select all of this, open Final Cut, bring it into our timeline, we've now got something like three minutes and 20 seconds of clips. And that's because each frame is four seconds long. We can quickly change this back to being one frame by going to modify, change duration, and I'm just gonna hit one on my keyboard. And you can see that changes the duration down here. And now we have exactly 50 unique images that lasts two seconds long, the same length as our original clip before our Photoshop change and with after our Photoshop change. And that's how I use generative AI to create a cool and interesting, unique effect. Now moving on to our next shot, how did I turn this frame of Gursky sitting in a chair with a lens that had a very clear vignette on it into something that felt like he was sitting at the end of a hallway? Again, it's pretty simple and anyone can do it. Because I knew in advance that I wanted Gursky to be this small in the frame, what I did was shrank him down and I set the scale to roughly 22%, but it can be anything you want. Ideally, it just needs to be the final size that you want your talent to be. And again, what we do is we export this as a still frame and bring this into Photoshop. Now that we've got this image in Photoshop, it's naturally going to land pretty small, even though it, trust me, is filling the full frame. So now that we've got our subject in, we can select around him and hit the invert button because we're going to want to fill all of this space, not accidentally delete him. So we're gonna to go to generative fill. Now, I quickly just found this image online of a hallway. I thought it looked pretty cool for this example. We're gonna open it up. Now that we have our reference image here, we can simply say add hallway. Now, after we wait for it to generate, we've now got some really, really cool options. It's even included his uh, reflection in this, um, in this example. Now, this is where it leaves off pretty simple and easy. All we gotta do is disable our artist, simply go to export, quick save as PNG, again, bring it into Final Cut. Now, as you can see, we've got this blank spot where our artist is gonna sit, so we're just quickly gonna drag and drop and now just like that with our artist sitting roughly at 22% and our image in full 4k resolution we can make this a compound clip add our keyframes for a zoom for example add a little bit of motion blur on top and now we have a really convincing hallway you might just want to be a little bit careful if you do get reflections because your artist is going to be moving and the reflection not so much because it is a static image at the end of the day. As you might notice, the more zoomed in we get, the lower this resolution looks and it kind of looks a little shitty. So we can quickly just drag and drop a directional blur on top of our background plate. And if we zoom in, now those pixels are a little bit more hidden. Once you add a color grade on top, some fancy effects, whatever your heart desires, you'll start to understand how you can add set extensions in your videos as well. And the last tip I'll give you today on how to use generative AI in your videos is to clean up your sets because sometimes we just can't get the perfect frame that we need. In this example, we've got a C-stand tripod leg here and the end of our cyclorama. And in this wide shot as well, we can see a little bit of the softbox, some cables, more C-stand legs. And it's just, it's not pleasing to the eye because we want this, uh, in my case, to be a perfectly clean frame. So what do we do? We save this as a single image and bring it into Photoshop. Now with both of our images in here, we can use our rectangular marquee tool again. We can easily just start selecting and generating our background and getting rid of those tripods. After a little bit of trial and error, you'll get something that looks nice and clean like this. So once we disable our artist layer, we can go ahead and export this as a PNG, bring this into Final Cut. Now moving on to our next still image, we're just gonna rinse and repeat this process. Just generating and getting rid of all of these ugly softboxes, cables, and tripods. Now don't forget, make sure you are using a fixed size that is below 1024 by 1024 to get the cleanest and sharpest results. 
Now that we've got a nice clean background, we can go ahead, disable the artist layer and bring it into Final Cut. With our cleaned up background now in Final Cut and trimmed to fit each clip, you can see the difference it makes and overall is a much more desirable looking frame than what we had before. And again, with a color grade and some nice motion, you can end up with beautiful, beautiful looking images that otherwise might not have been possible without the use of generative AI. If you've gotten this far into the video, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. That's it for this effects breakdown. If you want to see more, let me know what effects you want me to try and recreate or break down from my own videos that I've directed. And until then, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.